Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about how to submit Azure ML jobs from Jupyter Notebooks. Basically, uh, the same code that we can create in uh, Jupyter Notebooks files, we can put it in Python files and we can, we can control uh, when we want to submit those jobs with uh, some arguments, for example. For this example, uh, I only need two files, the train.py file and the light GVM experiment is use any name you want. Basically, uh, I want to train a, a house price prediction problem with a framework called light GVM. Uh, I'm not going into details of light GVM. So this video is only to explain about how to submit jobs and how to uh, track metrics uh, with the MLflow SDK from Python. And that's basically it. So let's get started. Here, uh, the first thing we need to do is to uh, have an object, an workspace object. And for that, we use workspace.fromconfig. And that means that is this workspace. So the entire Azure ML workspace. The second thing we need to define an experiment experiment name. Uh, we need to create an object with the workspace and the experiment name. So that's the object instance of the experiment. And then we need to set the tracking URI to the workspace MLflow tracking URI. So basically we are associating, we are linking the Azure ML flow, Azure ML URL with the MLflow URI. In this way, uh, whenever we want to use a uh, log metrics, uh, they will appear in, in the dashboard. Okay. Then we need to decide in which environment uh, we want to work. So if you remember from my previous video, environments appear on the left side of the menu and they are basically a docker image so you can see the docker file the docker definition file with all the requirements that uh, need to be uh, installed uh, on that environment uh, the python version the pip version so in this case we are going to use the azure ml skill learned uh, Ubuntu 20.04 with Python 3.8. So that's the environment where we want to run our training. So we have the environment. Then what's next? The next thing is actually to create a script run config uh, object. The script run config object uh, is uh, the parameter that we are going to use uh, for the experiment to run later. Here we can set up uh, parameters or arguments. For example, I created uh, the arcs uh, dictionary with the table name and the, tel uh, the table name is the parameter name and value real estate is the parameter value. In the script run config, uh, uh, the source directory is empty because it's going to search for that file, the train.py file inside the same folder. Then we pass the arguments, the compute target local, and the environment we decided to instantiate in the previous step. Now we have the script run config. Now, what do we do next? So we, we use uh, with experiment instance, experiment.submit, and we pass the configuration, which is basically the script run config uh, that we decided on the previous step. And then at the end, we just uh, call the wait for completion, and it will uh, show the logs, because I have show output equals true, so it, show, it will show the logs in the Jupyter notebook and you will be able to see all the metrics and all the uh, custom logs that uh, you write uh, in your train.py file. So before moving forward, let's go to uh, jobs. If you remember well, I created uh, this job. 
this experiment. Get started with your submission tutorial and live GPA. So that's the experiment, and the experiment has multiple job runs. Before going into details, let's go back and let's uh, search, let's check the, the train.py file. The first thing we need to do in the train.py file after all the imports and everything is the arguments. So we have to use the argparse.argument parser uh, and then we will read basically the table name uh, from the Jupyter notebook file and we will pass it to the inside the script. So with this line parser dot add argument uh, and then with arcs parser dot parse arc we will have all the parameters all the arguments there and then we can uh, strongly type we can use arcs dot table name because it's in the arcs object already. Then we need to load our data for that uh, I'm using the a workspace object with the subscription ID, resource group, and workspace name. And then with the data set dot get by name, if you see on the right, we have the name equals table name. So I'm not hard coding the table I want to read from. This is actually an argument that I pass from the uh, Jupyter notebook file, which if you remember here, is this one, Belgium real estate. So moving forward. So we have our data in a pandas data frame, then we use this flow, this line of code, mlflow.autolog. So everything that happens uh, within this script, metrics uh, and custom uh, login lines uh, will be written into the Azure ML uh, dashboard and also into the ML flow logs, which you can see at the end, they are just basically uh, text files. Uh, then I do my training. I'm not going into the detail here. So I'm dropping some columns. Uh, then I'm encoding uh, with one hold encoder some of the categorical columns. Uh, I drop the non-categorical columns, then I merge uh, to the pandas data frame, I merge the encoded ones. So I will end up see if I had 10 columns, but one of the columns was city and I do, do hot encoding, it will create one column for each different city. In this case, we have over 1000 cities in Belgium. So uh, the data frame will have 1000 new columns. Then I split the data. So features on one data frame, and uh, the label, the price in another one or a series, basically, this is a series. Then uh, for light GVM, we need to format the data in, in the correct way. And for that, we use the data frame uh, object. We pass uh, our uh, features, the column names. And finally, we do train test split. We, you already know what it is. It's basically we split the data between training and testing, 80% for training, 24% for testing, and we put it in different variables. Finally, with a uh, light GVM, we format again in the proper way, lgv.dataset, the X train, so the 80% of the features, 80% of the columns with the features, and then the label, so the, the series. After that, we create a, a dictionary, so key value with the hyperparameters for light GVM. So this is something that works for light GVM. If you are using other techniques, other part, other uh, algorithms, uh, it will have different uh, key pair values. Then we train the model, we predict, and then we can look. If you see here. We can log the root mean square error. We can log uh, strings. We can log uh, constant numbers, whatever you want. So this is uh, the entire process of cleaning the data, uh, dropping columns, uh, 
some pre-processing with the one hot code encoding, uh, some feature engineering because we are actually creating a new feature, price per square meter. Uh, then we do the training, and then we predict, and then we calculate the road mean square error. Finally, we go back to our file, to our Jupyter notebook file, and you will see here everything that happened in the training. If let's go a little bit up, up here, you will see the root mean square error is 10,354. That's uh, what we lock. And at the end, you can register the model. So register the model actually means that you will have the model ready to be served ready to be consumed by other users. Other users will be able to use that model without training. Just consume it with two or three lines of code and that's much better. So the result of this is that when you go to jobs and you click on our experiment, you will have uh, all the job runs because I did it multiple times. And you see this one, this one, August 29, and we have the last root mean square error, 10,000. 355 and you will be able to see it on the on the metrics as well uh, if i click over here on the last run you will be able to see also the metrics this one and my metric and another metric which which are just dummy metrics uh, with constants and then on the left side, if you go to model, the last line of code that I executed is ex uh, to register the model. So we have the Belgium real estate model and seven different versions. So every time you use the same model name, it will uh, create another version of the same model. And then we can test our model with some Python. I hope this video was clear enough so we really learned how to go step by step for running jobs inside Azure ML. If you have any questions, feel free on, on the comments below. See you in the next one.